Let's see if... Yeah. Yeah. February 13th, 1984. This is Joe Todd, an interview with Mr. and Mrs. Edward Thompson and Mary Crow. Okay. Sir, where were you born? 1907. 1907. Mm -hmm. 1904. Wait a minute. What? <laughs> 19, April 13th, 1904. Where were you born? Where? Yeah, about 11 miles east of Bartlesville, called Glen Oak. Shooter neighborhood. Okay. Who Indian is, Territory. Indian Territory. Who is your father? James Henry Thompson. And who is your mother? Sarah, Sarah Wilson Thompson. Were both your parents from Indian Territory? Yeah, in, in, in territory. Okay. Now, are you a Delaware speaker? Yes. How many speakers are there? Right here, let's see, there's one, two, three, that I can rain here. Mm -hmm. Down to Anadarko, there's several more. I imagine there's seven or eight of them down yeah. there. Last time I was there, okay. three, four years ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mrs. Thompson, where were you born? New York City. New York City? I'm not in Denver. How'd you get down here? Well, I, I was not down here, but I went up there. My aunt, mother's sister was in the hospital. And I was just, it was just an accident. Mm -hmm. It wasn't an accident, but it happened up there. <laughs> I got ready to come here and leave it. Um... Did your folks come to Oklahoma? Oh, they lived here. Oh, they lived here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, how did you come to Oklahoma then? Well, I come. <laughs> when my aunt got all right, we come home. My father come after us. Oh, okay. When's your birthday? March the 31st, right to me. 11. What kind of work did your father do? He raised cattle and, I mean, as a livestock and a farmer. Just general farmer. Mm -hmm. As a little boy, what kind of chores did you do around the farm? Pardon now? What kind of chores did you do on the farm? What kind of chores did I do? Yeah. When I was real small, I didn't do nothing, only just play around. Mm -hmm. But as I got older, I'd help feed cattle and also farm, plant corn, help with a harvest of wheat and oats, help with the cattle and hogs, mm -hmm. operate lots of hogs. Can you tell about the wheat harvest? How they did then? Yeah. Well. First, about the wheat harvest, it uh, it harvested about last of June. It cut it with a binder. It was pulled by about six head of horses, and they put it up in shocks all over the field. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they stack it, but if it was stacked, they had to let it go through a sweat for about 30 days before they thrash it. And there was a, usually a man from in the neighborhood or close that had a threshing machine. And he'd go to all the different farmers around, thresh their grain. It was a steam engine some days. Mm -hmm. And uh, they'd go from one f farmer's house to another, and the farmers would usually help each other. Of course, it'd take 25 or maybe 15 or 20 men or 25 men to harvest uh, wheat. It's according to how much uh, acreage you had to, to more men. Mm -hmm. 
so they had to do a lot of work trade swapping or help each other. But of course, had to hire outside fellers to our hands if there was a lot of grain. Mm -hmm. And they thrashed them and put it in the granaries. Some of them took it right to the elevator, sold it right then. How many acres of wheat did you have? We had around about 80 acres, uh, 70 to 80 acres every year, which was a lot them days. How long did it take to harvest that? Well, we'd take it generally about a day, day and a half. Mm -hmm. Why did you have to let the wheat sit for 30 days before in, it was In the stack? Yeah. On a kind of, went through a kind of a sweat. If you did uh, let it sit and it would be soft, the grain would be soft. Same way in a shock, but it didn't have to set so long. The little shock was seven or eight bundles in the little shock that set together, set up all over the field. Mm -hmm. Then they'd have to use bundle wagons. Go to have men run a wagon, they'd be fellows out to pitch the wheat into the bundle wagons. And then the bundle wagons would haul it up to the thrashing machine, and they'd pitch it over into the into a separator belt, a, a big belt that went from the engine to the separator. Mm -hmm. That uh, separate done the thrashing part of it. What kind of wagons did you have on the farm? What brand? Mostly Baines and Studebakers. Mm -hmm. Peter Shuttler, some. Mm. What kind of maintenance did you have to perform on the wagon? What kind of what now? Maintenance. Maintenance? Yeah, on the wagon. Oh, in the summertime, that if it was real dry, sometimes the, the rim of the tire was a was a iron rim, and it would get uh, come loose if they didn't take it to a blacksmith and having to draw it up because set and set it, or they'd get loose, mm -hmm. fall, crack, and of course they had to be take the wheel, or the wheel off the axle and grease it every once in a while. Okay. That'd be about all they'd have to do and make a bed if it was a, with the bundles they'd make a big rack, kind of a, like a stalk rack mm -hmm. to get the bundles on. How much did a wagon cost back then, a new wagon? Oh, I'd say they cost about $80, somewhere along in there, for a new wagon. Did that include the wagon sheet? Pardon? Did that include the wagon sheet? Wagon? The wagon sheet. Sheet? Yeah. Was no. that included in the $80? No, that didn't. Uh, you mean like a covered wagon? Yeah, right. No, I don't know how that be. We they never bought no sheet. I think they made that separately. Okay. Just plain wagon. Mm -hmm. Had a bed on it. Yeah. Uh, the Delaware Indians are in what group? Um, like Algonquin Nation? Yeah. Yeah. Al Algonquin. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Can you tell me some of the history of the Delawares before they came to Indian Territory? Yes. Tell me. Tell me about them. The first part of I'm going to tell you about the where the Delawares were. First, when the white man come here from England, we was the, they were along the coast of Pennsylvania, New Jersey, along in there. And I don't know how they come to be along the shores, but they was. Mm -hmm. And that's where they first was, when the Europeans come over. Mm -hmm. And the little boys would dig up uh, clams and things along the, instead of hunting when they were little boys, they would pick up clams and the older boys would hunt. See, they did in the way, well, and the one would hunt, the older men. And the women would do their gardening, like with beans and squashes, corn. That was about, it didn't have no wheat. Mm -hmm. And, uh, then when the uh, Europeans came over, they, uh, well, they lost it. They traded them out a lot of land that, that they had there. We, 
told me I'm not getting it out of the book. I'm just telling the way that my folks told me I had her down. <coughs> so they maybe a trade for some land or something or buy something with so much land. One instance of one, I guess maybe you've heard about it, they called the, the cowhide instant. instant. Hmm. They said, well, we don't want much land. We just want a land that's just as big as a cowhide. So the, the old counselors got together, surely we could let them have that much. We've got a lot of land as big as a cowhide, wouldn't be very much. So they just said, all right, we'll do that. So the, the colony or the Europeans took and made little strings out of that cowhide to reach a long ways. It's a big piece of land. <laughs> and uh, so they, they see then they had to really watch them pretty good in their trading. Later on, they had one they called the walking experience. You see, they wanted to buy some more land. I think that was in somewhere in Pennsylvania. We want just as much land as a man can walk in a day. So they got a little cheap in there. They said when they wasn't keeping up with them, they'd be a man on a horse, and when they got close, they'd go to walking again. So they got a big, good, big bunch of land. <laughs> and as they further uh, progressed on, till they finally moved to Delaware a little further. Of course, there was some wars, French and Indian wars, and we won't go into them. I don't think it's necessary to you. So uh, they moved them on until it got to be, uh, oh, somewhere in where Ohio is now. And eventually they got to move to, up here to Lawrence, Kansas. They had a Delaware reservation there, best preservation they had. When did they move there? What year? I don't know. I forget now what year it was. You remember when? Just, the, just about have, turn I'd of the 18. Look it up. Yeah, just turn of the 1800s. Uh, just about to, uh, I think it was early 1800. Mm -hmm. Somewhere along the line. Yes. Uh -huh. But 1830 something. Mm -hmm. Well, they, I don't know how long they lived there, but, my, but I've heard the old Delawares talk about the living up there, and my old great aunt would talk about when they lived up to Lawrence, or Lawrence, Kansas, mm -hmm. on the Delaware River uh, Reservation. I, see, I don't know how long they stayed there, but eventually they had must have been a, had a lot of good timber. Well, the railroads wanted timber to make ties with. So the politicians, they kept pushing them till they finally said, well, we'll just move the Delawares down in the Indian Territory. So that's about as far as close as I can trace them. I don't know when they moved down here exactly. 1867. 1867. Was it 67? I'd have to look, in, look it up. But I'm just telling it like the old timers said. They never put no dates in there. They just <coughs> moved down there. In the French and Indian War, which side did the Delaware fight on? You know, I don't know that. I don't know which side they fought on. Yeah. Had were you ever told any incidents about that war? No, sir. I can't remember. Yeah. Recall any they ever told me anything about that? Mm -hmm. well, I know that there was in, they took part on one side or the other though. How many tribes are in the Algonquin group? You want to find out whether I can name all them or not? Correctly. The Munsees was one of them. You know, I can't think of any more. You just can recall any of them, Mary? Well, were there Pottawatomies and Chippewas? I think uh, were in the group, and well, there are several others too. But I just offhand don't recall mm -hmm. others. But uh, I know the and was Quapaws in there too? No, I don't believe Quapaws was in there. 
Mm. What about the Osage? No, they weren't. I don't think they were in the Osage. Okay. I think Quapaws and Osages and Sioux, and they, they were in the Sioux and okay. the spread, that group, I think. Now, what was Pontiac? I don't know whether he was a... Mm. I see it. Um, Trying to think that he was. I, I, forget his, I forget his nationality, but it seemed like he was Algonquin. I'm not sure, though. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. uh, who were some of the chiefs back in uh, when you were in Pennsylvania and New Jersey? I sure can't remember who was chiefs, and I don't hear. I didn't yeah. ever. You know who signed the treaty with William Penn? Pardon? Who signed the treaty with William Penn? Oh, yes, yes, yeah. Uh, who signed that treaty? But Do you I know? That's what I can't remember. Yeah. Who signed that treaty with William Penn? I can't remember. Mm-hmm. That was about some war, some land. That was, too. He was a good one. He abided by the treaty as long as he was living, but his son wasn't, uh, was a different feller. The Delawares called him Mequin. Feather. Feather? Yeah, he had pen, you know. Oh. Goose quill. Yeah, Mequin. But I can't recall any of the chiefs that signed that mm -hmm. right now. Is the Delaware language a written language? No. No. This now has been trying to few write, write something, but that didn't have no written language of their own. Mm -hmm. We just hear down, hand it down, you know. Yeah. Is there an alphabet? Uh, does the Delaware language have an alphabet? No. No. Not that I know. Okay. How is the language structured? How is the language structured? Uh, like English has nouns and verbs, and uh, I'd like to get some background on the Delaware language. You know, I can't answer you there because uh, I'm not very good when I used to be on the school like verbs and adverbs and proverbs and conjunctions. I yeah. couldn't even say them now. Okay. So I was, it just. What, when two Delawares meet, how do they greet each other in Delaware? How did they greet each other when yeah. I meet them on the street? Mm -hmm. Say, hey, that's hello. Next thing I'd ask you, Ola Marcy Hutch, how do you feel? Okay. When we get questions, we'd look to it, say, everything's going good. And you'd say, yes. And see, that's the way they greet one another. Mm -hmm. First, I'd ask about your health. Ola Marcy Hutch, how do, how do you Yes, say so he'd say, yes, uh, Fita, or I've been sick. Fita means yes, kind of so so, like mm -hmm. that. That's where they greet one another. Um, Mrs. Crow, I don't know what to ask about the language. You might. Uh, you might just tell him. You might just tell him what you do know about the, how the language is done. Like we don't have any R sound and and those sort of things. You know, like like we don't have some sounds in the Delaware language. You know, that they do in English, and uh, what the different different words and how what they mean. You might just kind of say what some of those words mean, or say what a few little sentence. And then translate it in English what it means. Could you do that? You want to shut that off a little bit? Or is yeah. it on? So yeah. Uh -huh. Like you, you would ask me to say, well. Now you turn it on. How would you say, uh, it's sure nice weather? Or something like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You'd say, First thing I greet one another, we just, we just, that's why I've, I've been, we've been holding classes, man, some other people once in a while. So I greet one and say, 
they'd say, Somita, oh, it's cold. Eh, Somita, oh, yes, it's cold. Like that. Or, Somishitte, uh, oh, it's sure hot. So my shachan, it sure, sure, sure is windy, like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, in English, we say, "I'm going to town." I'm going to town. If I want to say it in my own language, yeah. I say, "Utenda" means town. I'm going. Okay, that's okay. Town, I'm going. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's. Well, I was exposed to Latin when I went to high school. You know how it was, yeah. kind of backwards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'd like to get uh, just a list of words in Delaware, um, like house, father, mother. Can you just give a list of words and then the Delaware counterpart? A list of uh, of words, you know, like house, uh, mother, father, dog, horse. Okay, and like to get what the word is in Delaware. All right. Like you want to know a horse. That's where we do like primary, like the yeah, yeah, dog yeah. running, the right. horse running. Uh, dog. Well, we'd say, uh, you want to start out, we'll say man, woman, child, mm -hmm. or like that? Yeah. Leno, man. Me, John, that means my child, or me, my suck, that means uh, kids. Square mm -hmm. means a woman. Square Q U. I don't know how Q is. Square Q Q Q U A Y. Square. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Woman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Leno, man. Nocha, father. Anna, mother. Niti, friend. No, I got that about father, ain't it? Did I say that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm not mother. Grandfather. 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 No, homus. No, homus. No, homus. Grandfather. Say no. Say no. No and yes. Say no and say yes. No? Who? No. <laughs> no, no, no. Yes. No. Who? That's no. Mm -hmm. no, no. What is night and day? Night? Piske. Day. No, that's the three ways. See, they are. Uliki Kishku, that's day. Okay. Night, piske, night. Mm -hmm. Really means dark. What are the different animals like deer, squirrel, rabbit? Deer? Mm -hmm. Ach tu, deer. Mm -hmm. Ach tu. Chamamus, rabbit. <coughs> What other one did you say? Um, well, horse. Yeah. Horse. Horse? Uh -huh. Nah, noun guess. Horse. Nah, noun guess. Cow. Cow. We shum we. We shum we. Cow. We shum we. Cow. What is earth and sky? Huh? Earth and sky. Okay. Dirt. Earth. Sky. And there's 
mechanics. I can't think of what it would be, sky. Now, right now. Star. You know, star. Star. Along. Mm -hmm. Star. Along. Star. Moon, do you have moon? Moon, bird? Moon. Moon. Moon? Yes, sure. Yes, sure. Mm -hmm. Now, birds. Now, birds like eagle. Oh, bird, uh huh. Yes, bird. say bird. Chulas, bird. Yeah. That's any kind of bird. Do you have a special word for eagle? Mm hmm What's that? Oh, I know what it is now. I'd have to think on that for just a little bit. I hum. I hum. I uh hum. -huh. That's the eagle. Mm -hmm. Crow. You know crow? Ah, uh hush. Ah, uh hush. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ma'am, are you a speaker? Do you speak Delaware? What's a uh, house or dwelling? House? Town? No. House. Weakwam. Weakwam? Mm -hmm. House? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. House. That's the word. House. Wigwam comes from. House, yeah. Uh -huh. Put Del it like wigwam, they yeah. call it. Wigwam. Uh -huh. Delaware's always lived in a, what the, originally were bark house. Mm -hmm. And they always called it a weakwam or wigwam. The white people evolved that into the word of wigwam. But originally, that was the Delaware's word for their dwelling, which was or their lodge. Yeah. Which always lived in a lodge. Yeah. And it was called uh, uh, We have a classes down there. I don't wonder what have you know Miss Markley, don't you? Yeah. We have some classes sometime. Next time, if I get somewhere to get a hold of you, I'll let you know. Okay. And we can sit down, no, take notes. Take notes. Yeah. Pretty good. Good. There's a lady up to Copa. We kind of get her down here. We can converse with each other just like. But the only one I know. Mm -hmm. What's her name? Uh, Lucy Parks. Lucy uh, Blaylock. Lucy Blaylock. 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 She's up to yeah. Okay. So far. Okay. What is the Delaware word for Delaware? Lenape. Not Lenape. But they got it down. You know, it says Lenape. 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 The common people, mm -hmm. but we just address ourselves as the Nape. Okay. Uh, do you know any of the old legends of the Delawares? The old stories? Yeah, I can recall several of them. Now there's one. Of Well, uh, I won't put it, we'll kind of rehearse it, huh? You okay. Know, some of the old legends. Let me think of one now. It's to be a, they tell this one. There's a little bird, I don't know what the English call them, we call them Mehmetumwis. He hollers in the, he sings in the summertime and no doubt you've heard him in July go like that. And after in about August he quit. We don't hear him anymore. And that's why the Delaware's called him Mahmoud Tomb. He sings his self to death. And I don't know. I bet you've heard him before. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I've never known whether they really die or not to sing their self to death, but that's the only time they sing you'll ever hear them. And they claim if you ever hear a fear of a hunting or in the woods walking, and a little bird about big as a sparrow, brown, and if you ever find one, it'll be laying on his back, and you get a live stick, punch it through him to the uh, to the ground, and make a wish, and it will come true. Mm -hmm. So a lot of several fellers went. Maybe they find one of them little birds. And, Put a stick in there. I wish to be a good hunter. I wish I could kill lots of deer all my life. That's what I want to do. 
be a good hunter. Well, it was things like that. Wanted to be a good hunter and this and that. One feller, he was <laughs> a little different. He found one, the little birds. He said, you know, I just wish I could have all the women to love me. <laughs> so, all right, I guess it was. He was been going, to, he'd been on a hunting trip then. When he got back to the village, the ladies come to meet him and they liked him so well they just tore him apart. <laughs> so that's one of the legends too. And there's another one that I've heard them talk about. It's a, so I always, uh, always put it in with a glacial period. <coughs> they used to say that uh, one time long years ago and by the time of the creation, there was a big snowstorm. Covered everybody up. Just nearly covered them up. And a, very, a lot of them died. They couldn't get to no food. But one old feller, he, he lived anyway. Oh, he ate on the people, the dead ones and the live ones too, nobody could catch. And they called him Hoi. So he'd catch people during that starvation time. And when the storm quit, there was just a few left. And he was still catching people that wanted to eat them. I guess he had a taste for people. Well, that's going to be kind of bad now. Go I'm going to tell just like it told me. Go ahead. So they didn't know what to do with him. We're going to have to do some with these catching people and kid children eat them. The older fellas got together and said, well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll just get some, uh, if we could find a bear and uh, find him and we'd kill him and we'd, uh, he'd got lots of fat, we'll render that bear, make lots of grease. And we'll catch this old giant boy that eat meat, uh, eat people. And, uh, and it caused it purged him, caused him kind of a laxative to him. That lots of grease, that fellow. Well, when that old went passed away from him, he got all right. He wasn't like he was used to be. He's a normal man. Just had to cure him. Is there a creation legend? In the creation, that's yes, but I can't recall that right now. Oh yeah, where did this one say? When God made, uh, was going to create man, he made him out of the first man, he made him out of clay, first him with clay. And he had a, they made a kind of, had a kind of oven, I guess, kind of like, Mexicans had, you know. So we put his first man in that oven. Pulled him out pretty soon. Then about baked now. Baked him a little too long. He's black looking. And his hair was kind of burnt. That was a colored man. So he been there a little too long. Well, he's going to fashion another one. One suit him. Made another man out of clay, put him in the oven. Well, I better not let him run so long. Pulled him out. He wasn't this right. He was white looking, kind of. That was a white man. <laughs> well, he ain't this right yet. I <laughs> made him another man. Put him in there. I better take him out now. Took him out. He was neither burnt, nor neither he wasn't cooked enough. He was just right. He was a red man. <laughs> Creation. That's just an old legend I had to tell him about. <laughs> That's all I can think of right now. Mary, can you do you know of any stories of the Delaware? Oh, uh, no. You used to have. Do you know any of those? Any of those ghost stories they used to tell about ghost stories, you know? I used to hear a lot of them. Ghosts or witches? Well, either. <laughs> either one, whatever. Witches? Witches. How did they start them, witches? I don't know how 
There was some children once uh, playing like all children does. And the uh, older people told them, this, I'm going to tell this about do doll dance, the dolls, they used to dance dolls. Well, the children was playing, that was in the part of the, uh, part of creation, the fan of Delaware. These children was playing with a doll, playing, playing, and all at once they made a doll. They made a little doll, but they told them never to make anything look like a person. These kids like her oh, went on ahead and made a little doll. And that doll talked to them. And they got scared then, throwed the doll down, running, told their folks, we made a doll, we hate to say it, but you told us not to, but we made one and it talked to us. Oh, they told them, I told you not, never do anything like that. Well, they went down and they showed me that doll, went and seen that doll, there was a little person, doll. They talked to him in Delaware, says, now, he said, you'll have to take me now and dance me every, every once a year, usually in the fall, and I'll help you, and help you have good crops and harvest to dance me like you would a dance and make new clothes for me every year. So they were saddled with that doll then. So every, it was more or less a family affair when a certain family had that. And every year they'd have to dance this doll. I don't know of any of the songs. I've heard them a lot too. And they danced 12 songs. They danced that little doll. Looked just like a person, even to the hair, the person hair. Had a little Indian suit on, little moccasins, everything. And there was a man and a woman. Oh. And it was shaped just like a man, a regular man. Every, everything was man and a woman, too. And if they didn't dance them, they'd have to have a little dinner for them, feast for them, like they was feeding him soup or something. And there's no way to get rid of that doll. If you'd throw him away, say, I don't want this doll, I'll throw him away. He'll find him back in your belongings in a few days. Now that's really, that's no legend, that's the fact. Hmm. The only way to get rid of that doll, if you didn't want to be, is just bury it with the person that had it. Then you could get rid of it. Or you could give it away to somebody that'll carry it on, you know. You couldn't sell it. It wasn't right to sell it. If you sold it, something would happen to you. The last doll I remember they had, I've been to them doll dance. The last one I had remembrance of was uh, John Foley. You know him, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Well, he had one. His wife did. And another one, yeah, I believe it's one, because I've seen him at the dance, dance. I believe it's a man, and there's another one that are up there had. But John had one. They wanted to give me that doll one day. So we've got to have somebody to carry this on. We'll give this to you. And I told him, no, I'm afraid I couldn't do it because I wouldn't know what to do with it, how to do it. So they give that doll to Rosie Frenchman. Do you remember Rosie Frenchman? Mm -hmm. Well, they gave it to her. And she sold it to the Smithsonian Institute. See, they told her not to sell it, but mm -hmm. she sold it. And that Fred Foley with me was just talking the other day about that. And she sold it, and it was not to sell it, but she could give it away. When she died, she was just shriveled. She was a little dwarf-like. Looks like she just diminished then, and she was a large lady. Yeah, oh, yeah she, she was. was a big woman. Mm -hmm. the time she was, the time she died, uh -huh. she suffered. She yeah, shriveled she, up. She wasn't over. It. They said mm -hmm. that she was just very small. I never did see mm -hmm. her in the last days, but they said that she just diminished yeah, down to just talking about. 50 pounds or something like that. Hmm. You know. Are there any dolls left? No, not that I know of. Mm -hmm. That's the only one I guess is left. Yeah. I don't know of any. They're usually, as they begin to, oh, they just put them in the they bury them with grave them. with yeah. them. Mm -hmm. And that was mm -hmm. the end of that. Mm -hmm. It really wasn't a blessing. It wasn't a good thing. Mm -hmm. But once they got it, they had to carry on with it. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the big house. 
I'll tell you as much as I can. Remember, I've attended a lot of them too, when I, not a lot of them, but when I was small. They tell me that we had first started with the old was saying in the beginning, the old was saying, when man was first created. God told them to make a big house out of logs. and go there to worship, and I'll give visions to men that can tell these visions when they get in this church. Maybe they'll have be out hunting or something, and they'll see something, or maybe a, some animal will talk to them. The Lord will talk to them through that animal. And uh, there, oh, there was a lot, when I, even when I was a boy, there was a, quite a number of them old fellas that, tell visions like prophets. And the, vi and the, the meeting would be called, and usually the chief or some of the main men of the tribe would say when they're going to have a meeting in the fall time, generally in October. It was more kind of a oh, thanks like too for their past summer crops and such. Also, for that. In October, they'd have their meeting. Twelve days. They told them to have twelve days of meeting. And on the last day, they'd go outside. It'd be the last day that beat it uh, outside. They'd go outside. All pray to the, the sun. It comes up. No, it was noon. And uh, after they'd all camp, on the north side of the meeting house, you got a picture of that meeting house, Dolly? Yeah. I'll do better than that. I'll give you a picture. I'll show you a picture you a little bit, and then I'll describe it. I didn't bring only one for Mary. Mm -hmm. He can get one. I call that Jerry There's no nails in it. This is the, this is the inside of it. We don't have the picture here. We well, I've got a lot of it too. This is the inside of it when it faces the west or faces the east. Always come in where the sun is. And uh, two fires, at one and one over there. And that pole there, at one center post, goes to it's about 40 by 60. And this face here is painted right side of it is red, and the left side of it was uh, black. But as far as I could get, I, I never asked, I tried to ask. We had a drawback when we learned. They'd tell us kids to quit asking so many questions. There was no other way for us to learn, but the old fellas wouldn't, old people wouldn't tell us. They wouldn't like to ask questions. Later on, I, I asked. What asked my dad? I said, "What does that face mean?" He says it means the, the life and the death. I said, "Did you go to good life or the black darkness?" And that's where he explained it to me. And right over here on the north side, this is north, this is east. The man that would always be one man run that be as like a head preacher and. He'd stand over here, and he'd start the meeting. And that right at the door, they'd have a little terrapin. It's a, you know, shed yeah. got mm -hmm. little rocks or whatever in the shake like that. And that's the one of the there's two men stand by the door. Two women stand over the door on this side. They were workers. And they'd start that there. Terrible. And first he'd get up and speak and tell him how to, it, this thing was church, just how it was done in the beginning right up to now. Well, then they'd start this terrapin way down here. There's one of these heifers, get this terrapin, put him here, like he was sitting like the and I, yeah. to me. And if I didn't see a villi vision or nothing in my life, I just took that terrapin, didn't make, didn't make no noise, passed it on to you. Well, if you was a visionary or prophet, 
you could take that little rattle and go there, shush, 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 shush. And right over here, these two fellas is drummers. We call them Tallahassee. And it's, they got a drum. It's made out of deer hide about this long and stuffed with the deer hide they used to have. But finally, they got to put hay in it. And there's four slats, hickory slats, about that long, about that wide. The length of that deer hide, it's done up with deer, or string, the deer string hide. It's drum, right? See, it looks like it's holding a feather. Yeah. But then the feather, it's kind of more like a paddle, about, about as wide as my, about as wide as my hand, mm -hmm. handle about that long. But, but, but it's more of a slap. And as soon as you shake that rattle, it'll go, fuck, fuck with them two drummers, and he started his story. Like he'd say, I was once, and I was a boy. I'm going to translate old man Elker's vision. He was the only one I can remember. When I was a boy, one fall day, I, I'm going to do this like he does. One fall day, when I was a boy, I was out walking. And I was thinking, that's it. When I was walking, I just lost my brother, and I was very sad. I was really sad. I didn't want to live anymore. I think, why do I have to be living and my brother passed away? He says, I sure don't feel well. It's a good. I'm a, and all at once something told him, don't feel that way. I'm going to show you something to you carry on in the church in this church. He said all at once something had bump right by me. And that was uh when I for my first I can how it was, it was a hawk. Maybe you've seen him where they hit after a quail real hard. And it told him his vision, but I can't remember his vision or song, but I think I know. Where he said when he was a little boy. But he was out walking it because he'd lost his brother. And he has the, uh, the option of either dancing or telling his story sitting down. And some some fellers would dance. They'd get up to dance. That's where you see them dancing now. Mm -hmm. And he'd be going along in the front and telling that story. But whenever they'd get ready to dance, these fellers over here would sing a song and found it. Huh, 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 and then he'd take his rather than go up and down this way with it. And they'd dance around there 12 times, and they'd sit down, and then they'd sweep. See, that's dirt, right? Yeah. That's dirt on this, and this is kind of hay. In the old days, they had whatever hay, leaves, they could put on their set yeah. on. And these workers, one man, one woman go this way, and man go that way, with turkey, turkey away and sweep the floor. Sweep it, and they'd meet up there. Have to get through sweeping. Well, they move the terrapin on to the next man. That way, till they got through, no more talkers, and meeting was over. Church was over for the night. Why would they sweep with the feather? Why did they sweep with the feather? Yeah. They claimed that was a road, to, a similar, simulating a road to heaven. Okay. Then they'd sweep it, clean road, or next man. I'd, every time I'd be another talker, they'd sweep it. Mm -hmm. How often would they meet in the big house? Pardon? How, how often would they meet in the big house? Once a year. Once a year. October, usually. Mm -hmm. Tell him tell about the Messing and what they call the Oh, devil. yes, That's the Messing was in there. He's, he's something like this, too. Yes, I'm glad you mentioned that. He's got a, there's a face made something like that there, only it had a covering of a, of a bear skin. And that this uh, machine would symbolize a keeper of the deer. Uh, deer was main, one of the main things, a poor source of supply. And I don't know what night he dances to this, this, uh, was seen, but he had a bear skin on, and this had a wooden face, two holes in it, and he had a rattle, a big terrapin, it was a water turtle, more or less, but a handle on it, he'd shake that. 
And on that night, I believe it's a ninth night, but I'm not sure, a ninth evening, he'd come in out of the woods, brush, and singing a song. I don't know that, but he'd sing this song. He'd come in, and they'd, let him, they'd come in, and he sung a song, but it wouldn't stay all night, and it'd go on out. And he was uh, supposed to take care of the deer. And if when they're hunting, he'd uh, scare deer towards the men. So they'd bring in deer. And also they had hunters. I believe that was on the fourth day, fourth morning. They'd appoint four fellers to hunt deer. They'd go in there, go in. And this head man, he'd, they'd stand up in front of him. When I seen them, they put their rifles down and he talked blessed them but I guess in the for the head guns they used bows whatever then but then the, I've seen them use the rifles put them down there. and then they'd go hunting mm -hmm. and they had a song as they went walk this way they'd walk this way you know they walked that way to go out the door as they went out the door then these fellas that sing a certain song I don't know that one but I refer to Walter Wilson, he knows that hunting song and they know the coming in song when they come in. Well, they'd be, the hunters would be out. And they told them, now, don't eat nothing while you're hunting. Don't eat anything till you come back. And this is, they'd come in and if they got one deer or two deer, they'd come in horseback and they'd shoot two times, fa, fa. Boy, these fellas, these drummers, have got to be on the alert on that. I believe it's the ninth or fourth night. I believe it's the fourth day. And then they'd sing that coming in song. You know, they'd come in with that deer. So what they got, to, that they, they'd give blessings. They, they was glad that the, the Creator helped them find deer. <coughs> and they'd sing that song. They got through singing a the song, they'd walk out again. You know. About all I can tell you about that. How big was the big house? About 40, about 60 foot long, about 40 foot wide. Okay. Mm -hmm. How tall was the center post? Pardon? How tall was the center post? It must have been about 20 feet, mm -hmm. I'd say. What happened to the big house? Fell down. Fell down. In about 1928 or somewhere along. The last meeting they had... 1925. How come they stopped using it? They didn't have no more profits. They didn't have no visionaries. It's too much going to school. They had to go to school, you know. If you didn't go to school, they had to rest you. Said, come to your house. I've seen them. Come to your house. Yeah. Marshal. Federal Marshal. Send the kids to boarding school, Shilako or someplace. Then they'd, when they begin to do that, well, they lost that power. They didn't have it no more. That's why they had to quit. I've heard other tribes tell me if it's so good, why three don't you carry it on? Said, well, we can't carry it on because there was no visionaries no more, no prophets. Mm -hmm. None of them old fellas had prophets. They'd, they'd uh, prophesy things too, in ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Tell them what was the name of the big house church? Wing Wee Gown. Wing mm -hmm. Wee Gown, the big house. Really, the big house. Wing mm -hmm. Wee Gown. And that's for three clans, I believe. Turkey, turtle, wolf, wolf, tuxi. Yeah. Wolf, wolf. Yeah, tuxi. Tuxi. Round foot. Yeah. I'm a, on the turtle clan, they sit right up in there, and the turkey's right in here. Yeah, right there. They call them paleo. I believe I'm right. I know I had to sit right up in that corner of the uh, turtle clan, or I could sit over either place. My mother was a turkey clan. That was the north, turtle. northwest corner where you sat? Turtle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why the three clans? How come the Delawares have three clans? I can't tell you that because I really don't know. Mm -hmm. I just don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tell him how to say each of that in Delaware. You know, like wolf is tuxi. Yeah, tuxi. And, then, and turkey. Turkey. I mean, uh -huh. mm -hmm. And uh, 
Uh, turtle. Why is that there? Yeah, it's not cook, but that's yeah. the same thing. Sometimes they say toothpaste. Are you a singer? No. No. And I didn't see no, couldn't sing either, and I didn't see no visions. <laughs> <laughs> Television, I guess. That's what I told them about. That's all these children now can ever see is television. Mm -hmm. They don't go nowhere, <laughs> out hunting in woods. You see, Delaware people come from where there's woods. Mostly always, they like timber, woods. They weren't like the, the uh, Plains Indians, mm -hmm. you know, the, the teepees on the prairie. Mm -hmm. um, just a minute. Good. Yeah. You got that thing going? I'm going to chew some gum. Uh, wrote by Speck. I can remember when he come down, I was a boy. You've heard of him, eh? Just Speck is a historian. Speck. Yeah, I don't know if he's living, but he wrote a, all about the Delawares. He come down there one time, and then my dad could write. He wrote out in long, and he says, someday we'll want to know how this run. That Papa and them, uh, Papa wrote it down, the old timers are sitting there. And this Speck come down, and he got told of this, what they wrote long, and and it tells everything step by step. Oh, thank you, Mary. Step by step. And I got that paper somewhere at home, and I can't find it. Mm -hmm. We hid it too good. Yeah. Um, and if I find it, I'm going to have several copies yeah, of it made. Yeah. What are some of the ceremonies of the Delaware? They had another one. I never seen it. It called uh, setting up and getting down. That's the way we did. I've heard my folks talk about it, but I don't know what it meant. But that was uh, certain families had to do it. They'd uh, get together, and I don't know what time of year they had it. But they'd take a hog, real fat hog, and render that hog, and there'd be a kettle of grease. Pork in it too, as they said. And it, uh, men sit on each side of that kittle or fire, and then they'd sing songs too. And they had that hog head. That was really something, I guess. And they had a song that sing around with that hog. And then they drink that lard. I don't see how they could do it. But what they call it, my, my folks used to call it grease drinking. But I never seen that one. And that's not been too long ago either. Yeah. Oh, 50 years ago, 60, something like that, maybe a little longer. Hmm. Yeah, my child, I used to hear him talking about that. They're having a grease drinking over at somebody's house, Anderson boys. They had that kind of a, I don't know, some kind of a, whether it's a religion or what. But in the way they done it. Mm -hmm. I try to think, that's the only one I can think of it. Is there a manhood ceremony? Where Pardon? When a boy meets manhood, do they have a ceremony, the Delawares? Not a, I can't think of one for the boys. But boys wasn't supposed to holler loud or talk loud when he's changing his voice. Mm -hmm. They claim he'd uh, ruin his voice. But they didn't have no ceremony. But for girls, I remember that one, when they reached uh, puberty, mm -hmm. they'd uh, take a girl, they'd separate her and put her over in a little, another room or maybe a tent, and keep her there till she was through and, she'd, and her mother would take her things to eat. And I said, well, what does mama say? And then she'd have to put something on her hands wrap them up so she wouldn't touch herself, you know. They claim you contaminate herself some way. It wasn't clean. And they said, they'd do that till they, it was kind of a ceremony. They'd have to leave her there till she got over this. And uh, then they would uh, 
take her and bathe her all over, some her mother, or generally some old woman, and bathe her and everything, give her new clothes, and she was all right then. That was the common womanhood. Mm. That, mm. I don't know if you hear them say that. Yeah. Nor it was a little girl, but I don't remember her ever doing that, but they might have, I don't know. <laughs> but she know they claimed she did. I don't know. Well, that really that was my sister. Like <laughs> yeah. They well, seen the fence, put her in the room to herself. Mm -hmm. They might have, I don't know. Right. What about the burial ceremonies? Yeah, that's something. first burial ceremony that I can remember of, I had a brother, full, my full brother. Was just, I had just one brother, one sister, and a half-brother. We lived well over whole children, and went to the Indian Delaware cemeteries up here for Dewey, you know. And my brother passed away in 1911. Seemed like it was in March, but it was 1911. When he passed away, they put him in a, a little, put him in a tent. At then, that time, that day, inside the house. And then they put him on a board. They made the Sam Andrews made a board to fit a man lay on that board. They did put him in the house. He laid out there and that set up with him all night long, kind of wait. And when come morning, they didn't breathe in the in bomb. Well, they wasn't then, then hardly. And then we started early. Went to start across there, took all day, but you know, half a day, I remember. And the man, at the, the deceased, didn't go in the front like they do now. He was behind, last, last wagon, back to the deceased on earth. And his skin folks was up the front. The wagon and went. Before they, before they go to the cemetery, they'd appoint four men, if they called them workers, and, and that wasn't kin to the deceased, and four ladies to cook. You know, for the when they got out there. Well, these four men had to start their day grieving the grave early in the morning. When they got there, they'd put him up there by the grave and put his uh, coffin on that uh, sticks crossed there, right on top. And then there'd be a preacher, a talker, to tell all about how he lived and that's how his people should live now and this and that. And if they had a preacher, but they didn't have no white man preacher there, my brother, it's just Old man Elker, I believe, the one talks. And after he got through talking, they'd lower the corpse down the grave, and all the belongings this man had, was some of his, maybe he had good clothes, or, he was given to these workers, good boots, good shoes, or coat, or hat, or whatever, but his old everyday clothes he wore, threw them in there with the when they took him up. Hmm. And then when they got him all covered up, then they took out and put two wagon sheets on the ground right by the, right by the grave. And they'd have a table for the people that just uh, came to the deceased on one, right there at this table. And the people over here was the friends. friends. Mm -hmm. And they'd put the man, if he was a friend, you brought your dinner, the food stuff, you put it over here on the, the deceased side on the table. And the deceased people had food, they put it over here on these people's side. And then they had dinner, they talked, say what all it was for. And then they had their dinner. When they were through eating their dinner, Right after they got him covered up, 
This man, if it was his brother or his wife, they built a little fire right there in front of his, at the foot, head of his grave, and he'd done that for four nights, built a little tiny fire. But I never did know what that was for, or what it done, but they built a little fire up there. Tell them about those uh, grave sticks. Hmm? Oh, yeah, the grave stick. The grave stick, the, the, the like a marker, grave marker. For a man, it was a straight stick back in the old days, I guess a straight stick. But uh, you usually got to use the two by four, about six foot long, just straight stuff. Mm -hmm. Put it down under his head with a grave for a man. But if it was a woman, they could read and write, you know. They put a cross like that. Would, that was for sure it was a woman. Hmm. That was the only identification they had. Then they paint that stick. It's sharp, set like a, up on the top of it, set like a, kind of like a diamond. And they paint that with a paint, I don't know, we call it all lemon. And that was supposed to be the paint his road so he'll go to heaven on that red road. I got some of that paint. What's handed down to me, I don't know how old it is. Fred Washington gave it to me and Fred said his dad had it and his dad gave it to him. So Fred gave it to me, I got it now. What kind of paint is it? Well, that's what I don't know what it's made out of. It's powder. It's powder. It's powder, it's yeah. Powder. It's powder. Powder, I've seen it. No, mine's getting about used all up. I had to paint a Frenchman's stick. Mm -hmm. But I, I still got some more. There's two kinds. One for the, put on the grave marker, and one is to paint them whenever they have stomp dance or war dance. That's a different, different kind of paint. I, think it's and I haven't got that one. Nori's got that one that, uh, where they have a stomp dance. The it ladies has a they, they paint a little, little round dot. It Delaware's like now. Yeah. And then two little marks here by the eyes. You know, like that. That's the only way. They say that's to say when I get to where the creator's going to fix for me, they'll know I'm a Delaware and they'll put me where the Delaware's is by their marks there. And the women has two little dots right there. That's a, they, they fix them that way when they die, too. They Paint them at midnight. Yeah. Why they, midnight? Yeah, huh? Why midnight? I don't know. But they told me, the old, one one fella told me, that's the beginning of a new life. Mm -hmm. Why it's, it's midnight. That's that old man they, John Fuller yeah. told me that. They have a, they have a kind of a ceremony at midnight. Mm -hmm. They talk. Yeah, I, I do. And then I forgot to tell you, at midnight they shoot too. Just like the old military men, they claimed it was to scare away the evil spirits. One time. Mm -hmm. I remember that one too. Yeah, they shoot. I don't know what they done, we didn't have no guns. <laughs> um. Can you think of any other ceremonies that the Delaware's had? Um, not just offhand. And do you know how long they have danced, like stomp dances and, and war dances and things like that? They've always done that, haven't they? Yeah. And uh, the Delaware dress, uh, they've, uh, can you remember early days? Now the, the Delaware's, uh, the men's and the women's, uh, tribal dress, uh, have, uh, they've had that a uh, long time, mm -hmm. you know, where they did ribbon work on there and, yeah. and uh, made the roach uh, feathers, you know, for their hair. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you know whether the, uh, whether the Delawares uh, gave that kind of a dress sort of to the Osages or, or how that was? It was similar. Uh -huh. Especially that hat, yes. that, that ceremonial, you know, war dance hat. It didn't hang way down, you know, just no. kind of stuck up, just a few feathers stuck up like that. That was Delaware. The old, old sages got the same kind of dress on the hats. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about? Is there a ceremony? Huh? Is there a ceremony when a child is born? No. When you name them, 
There's no ceremony when they're born. But they don't, like when I'm trying to, I don't remember if they had any. So my death, I suppose they did, but I don't but know that, Mary. There's ceremony when they name them. And yeah. When they give them a name. Oh, yeah, when you give them a name. Yeah, that's... You want to tell them about that? Yeah, that way it's supposed to be done. And I don't do that. I name them. I just name them. <laughs> but it does help. I have a strange way of... Ne when I get a name down, I... Brooks is a little kid. Well, I'll tell you how they do. First, I'll tell you what happened upon me. They uh, summon this uh, name. Feller's going to name the child. Sometimes he'll be three, four, five years old for the name. Of course, their folks will give him a nickname. Maybe his little, little beaver, little bird, or something like that, or little woman, or little kid, boy. But they officially, there'd be a name giver. And he'll name this child, and they have a all come to his house, a bunch of friends and stuff. And then they'll build a big fire out there and have a big kettle food stuff in it. And about noon, they'll uh, name this child. This fellow named this child, whatever he named, whatever he generally has some way to. Something he gets a clue to name it. But they got to tell him in a week or two ahead of time, so he'll think of a name. They ain't supposed to name it what somebody else had to name it if he can know of. It was not a good, good omen. And when they named him, the name giver got to stand there and be further to help him. And they have a pipe, and he talks about this feller and how long he knowed his family and this and that and he puffed that pipe and four waves of the wind and then he'd say well I was told to name this little child it's a great honor to me and all this and that then he'll name it said so this is your name now from now on as long as you live well then the, the people that the relatives of the little child Give this name giver maybe a blanket or a shirt or whatever, like to give him a gift. And that was all I can remember about the ceremony. And the family, the family would give the name giver a gift, you know. Yeah, they'd give him a blanket or something. But he don't ever tell him that, Mary, but I'm going to give him something Now, when Joe Brooks told me that, that his little daughter, they didn't give me but about two or three days time. And I just didn't know wonder what I'm going to name it. I think God come up with all kinds of names, but don't, that didn't do it because I remember another fella named that. I got up early. What the dickens why I'm going to name that kid? That old told me to get up early. I opened the door on the, on the east side of the house. First thing I seen was that morning star, this bright, just coming dawn. That must be what they wanted me to name it. So I just ordered to. Morning, morning star. That's what I call Joe Brooks' little girl. And he said, did you know she was born this when daylight? He went out for the hospital. He said, it just, just didn't day. Now this thing, strange things that's a, that you can't explain to you. It just, it's hard to do. Oh yeah, I've named several children. They give you things. Um, Why do the Delawares dance? Is there, do they dance for certain ceremonies? Only the doll dance, I can think of. Do they still do the doll dance? Huh? The doll dance so was a ceremony, but it was uh, usually confined to a family that yeah. had that doll. Do they still dance? Yeah, no, that doll, they ain't no way, ain't yeah. got no doll. We have dances now. It's just a social gathering. Mm -hmm. I've always had that, like lead dances and war dances too. But the war dances are all carried on altogether different now than when I was a boy. When I was a boy, it was really war dances. Now they go around in a circle like that, and uh, they sing these mostly Western songs. These now, 
But the Delawares and the Shawnees had a song was almost the same. And uh, the Western Indians now had a drum set, four, five, six, seven, eight guys singing. But the Delaware and Shawnee just had four, three or four singers, and they had a water drum, a ten-gallon, five-gallon can, keg, two-thirds full of water, deer hide strapped over real tight, tied with little ropes. Boy, it'd go loud, boom, boom. Hmm. And they'd dance war dance songs. And the dancers put on their war suits, I dance every way. I just a man out there just going up every which way to dance into that drum. And the old ladies would be way back there. They didn't dance with them. They just stood there and kind of keep time. And pretty soon maybe I was an old warrior. He'd go up dancing towards that drum, and that drum he'd go up there and put his hand on it. it stops. Stops the drum. Then he tells us when he was in war, he tells his story. Where all he went, where all he went, how he done, how near he got to come get killed, how many guys he killed, and all that stuff. And then when he gets through talking, he has him a plug of tobacco, an old plug of tobacco. He throws it way, and oh, while he's a talking, and if he pauses a little bit, then drum, a drummer goes bum, and he goes again bum. They call it. I can't think of that name. Anyway, he when he pauses, they hit the drum. And when he gets through talking, he throws that tobacco way back in my, some old lady go up there and get that tobacco, push it off, put it in the pocket. I don't know what she done with it. <laughs> That's the way. And then on top of that, oh yeah, they used to carry their tomahawks. Mm -hmm. Going just like that there. All the tomahawks or maybe Whatever he had, a club sometime, wall club or a club. Oh, they just go really good. That was they didn't dance in a circle. They still do that down to little, little river. Mm. Still down carry down. on that way. No. They come in on horses, boy, the yeah, dead no. lope start oh, yeah. in. They we didn't do they didn't do that way here. Last one I went to down sky too. You go to Wyoke, Mary. I haven't been for a long time. Yeah, I've seen them. They don't do that. They don't care no Tommy Hawk. These Western Indians, they just kind of dance around there. Mm -hmm. About 10 or 12 guys on a dry drum, big old drum dry one. Did the Delawares have warrior societies? Uh, the, uh, yeah, they called them Elaok. They were men. Revered as, as fighting men. And then they had Lupwe and Nuak, wise men. And that was more of like a cabinet to the chief. Mm -hmm. That when they had some big problem, they'd call in the wise men. They'd all have a council. Shall we do this or shall we not do it? Shall we have war or shall we not? Or shall we sell this land? Whatever. They called the wise men. And then the warrior class was fighting mm -hmm. men. Oh, yeah. how, did, how did you say that the uh, wise men in Delaware? Lupwe in Noak. That's the wise man. Lupwe in Noak. Mm -hmm. They called in the wise men. Now, how did you say the warriors? With the E Lauk. E L I, I guess. E Lauk. E Lauk. That was the fight of the warriors. Every man wanted a young boy, he wanted to be a warrior. Mm -hmm. Now, can uh, you know that little song I was trying to tell you a while ago that, that my uh, grandpa used to sing? That he used to sing this, what he called the daylight song. And he'd. Uh, He'd just say it was coming daylight, you know, and then he would sing this little song, and then he'd, and then he'd pray, and uh, it'd just be, you know, kind of interesting like that. way. Mm -hmm. they'd always be, uh, they were always thankful for another day, you know, to make it to another day. So, what do they call it? You know, you know it's always, it's just 
say, Hey, Mechi Opon, Aye, 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 Then he'd start praying. He'd pray for a while. And then he'd sing again, that it's daylight again. And that's just what that means, that it's daylight again. He's thankful for that. Mechi Opon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. It's come yeah. again, Don. Mm -hmm. Yes. It was a great thing for them as a dawn was yes. a new, new, new thing, a new promise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you know any songs? You mean uh, Delaware songs? Yes. Yeah, you can say I exactly. don't know of any war dance songs, like that, but I can sing a kind of a little of I belongs to a, a son. But he ain't supposed to sing it only in the wintertime. Like oh, rattlesnakes, I remember that. My mother used to sing that. And it's wintertime now. That means uh, rattlesnakes said, we are great spirits too. Rattlesnake said, "We're great spirits too." That's all they'd sing. That's a long Rattlesnake said, "We're great <laughs> spirits too." <laughs> now, do you know you know some other any other little songs that that you know of? You have any other little songs, Delaware songs that you could sing? You have any other Delaware songs you could sing? Me? Yeah. Ah, I see. And you know any of your daddy's songs? Any songs that your dad used to sing? No, I can't story. think of any now. Only I heard what the old man Elker's song. That's when I tell you about that vision. I believe it was his. He says the old man's knows the question. Haki ku we la no wa ku wa ku ku wa ku we Haki ku we la no wa we 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 that's kind of like a man. He said the the old man knows I guess I don't know what he meant. I guess he meant the song. No, do you know the old man? Do you know the old man knows? Do you? Did you know the old man knows? And that's the first I can remember of that in this song. But it's, well, it was more to it. Mm -hmm. They were, they were great people. The Delawares uh, have great respect for old people. They really respected their elders. Mm -hmm. and, uh, now, if I'm, I was up to town, well, I remember going to town. Dewey was our principal town to go to. I'd meet some of the old ladies, like old lady the little. The first thing I'd do is go up to her and shake her hand. I'd say, how are you feeling, grandma? I'd always call her grandma. Wasn't my grandma. But I called her grandma out of respect, reverence, like. Mm -hmm. Same way I was her grand yeah, old man, well, same yeah. way. Mm -hmm. So, first his name, and he said, Oh, Nate John, dear. He said, Oh, my little gr grandson, too, if they told you. Yeah. But wouldn't be no kin to me. But everybody Listen. was, everybody your same age was. Like your brother or your cousin, you know. Yeah. And uh, everybody older, your mother's age, would be your yeah, little mother or your yeah, little father. Mm -hmm. That's like we do, and that's, mm -hmm. I always when that pr no, we always I always do that too. Not uh, but more so. If I'm praying to open a <laughs> meeting for the Delawares, this I'm opening. They told me to open a meeting for Delawares. So I'll always always do that. I always thank the Creator for the Son. We call the Son our older brother. For he gives us light, warmeth, and helps the plants grow. And I sure give him thanks for the water 
For if we didn't have water, we would perish. And it's all these things you brought, you do everything with your great forethought and knowledge. Before we created us, you had this water. You had that son, which is our brother, our older brother. Our older brother, he was for reverend and then to the younger brothers mm -hmm. and the older people like that. Hmm. Thank I mean, you for this son and and the air we breathe. I forgot about that one also. How do you say son or older brother in Delaware? The son? Mm-hmm. Nahas Wakeshu. Nahas, he's my older brother. Mm-hmm. our older brother. Why are the Delawares called the Grandfather Tribe? I don't know why they named the Delaware's grandfather. I don't know, but these other tribes do call the Delaware's grandfather. I don't know why. Out of some respect, I guess. I've never had that explained to me. Yeah, we've been a tribe about as long as any tribe, I think. Yeah, you know, I know these Western tribes, they'll call me fan of your grandfathers, the Delawares, but I don't know why. That made a lot of confusion when we made the, the rules, the Delaware rules. They said his grandfather, it wasn't his grandfather, so the old timers, it was hard for them to understand because they couldn't talk English, so that it confused them. But sure enough, maybe his is Delaware, or maybe his is grandfather. It isn't, it wasn't. Yeah. When was the, the uh, Delaware rules made? I don't know when that first rule, the old Register of Delaware's, I don't know when it was made. 1867 or somewhere along somewhere in there. there yeah. That's when they all got 160 acres. When they came down here. Uh huh. That's before they moved yeah. down here, yeah. Just no, they was. moved down here and got their name. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, they had to, Papa told me when they named them, the clerks, be up there, government clerks, they, what is your uh, Indian name? If they translated that, Maybe his name was uh, Little Little Wolf or something, but usually sometimes they'd give him a name, like I'd say, mm -hmm. maybe some old fitter, what's your name, how about just John Brown or something like that. Yeah, it's all right to make John Brown, <laughs> wrote it in the records, the records, you know, that's it, first English name. And there was one old boy, he used to go to Cofferville them days to trade. And now he kept hearing all the merchants say, now he'd show him, this is the best quality right here this year, first quality, best quality. Well, that old boy come up and he said, what's your name? Best quality. <laughs> all right. What do you want, but how about first name? I don't know. If we, they said, how about John? John, best quality. <laughs> That's what his name was. You know, he must never had no children, for they didn't. No, no, survived. We don't have any best qualities now, do we? Then there was another one. Oh, but they, they talk about him. There's another one. And I hear them come up there and say, what's going to be your name? He said a little bit. Have you seen these thrashing machines? He said, my name's Machine. <laughs> well, machine, all right. Charlie Machine. You know, we down. What's the reason they got not like my name, see? Thompson, they just they figured, well, how about that? That's all right, write it down, my Joseph Thompson, my grandpa, that's why they done him. Yeah. They just give him a name. What was his name, what was his Indian name? Huh? What was your grandfather's Indian name? I don't know it. I don't know. Well, what, Never heard him say. Do you, do you remember what they called your grandfather? Huh? Do you remember what they called your grandfather? Oh, he wasn't a live yeah. one. I don't know. His what father was Indian, I don't remember. You, you don't care, don't remember what they call him? No, his name was Joe's, I call him. Joe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't remember. Remember. But, but I don't know what they called him. Mm -hmm. I really don't know. You don't know the Indian name? No, that's not, why not they, the That's what they did a lot of times. They, all they had was that Delaware name. That's you know? all, yeah. And then when they write, write it on the rolls, they just give them a name. Yeah, know? or you could uh, think of one. Mm -hmm. and then there's one on there. His name is Delaware Charlie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he, yeah, yeah. Everybody knew Delaware yeah. Charlie. Yeah. And just yeah. different things like that. that. Just Sir, do you have an Indian name? Yes. What is it? 
Sasaki Paki Kaman. That's my Delaware name. What's it mean? It means the man that walks in the woods, walks in the timber and kicks up leaves. Shh, shh, shh. Leaves. Hmm. The one that walks in the leaves. Sasaki Paki Kaman. He goes and where he walks, kicks up leaves. You see leaves on the ground. Mm -hmm. then tell, tell him what your sister's name is. Isn't that just something like touching leaves or something like yeah, that? I can't that's think of her name. Touching right leaves. Now. Touching leaves. Touching leaves. Huh? Oh, yeah. Touching, you know, leaves. touching leaves is what she calls her name in English. But I can't think of how that is translated into Delaware. That I forgot. See, now my yeah. name... My name in Delaware is Wetailina, which means uh, kind of walking among them, you know. Uh -huh, seen, yeah, a, yeah. seen among them, outstanding, something like that. Whoever named you, that seems something walking amongst mm -hmm. people or something, or yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's why you guys. You had to bring us in some instant to uh, name, name this person. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know what Norris name is, it's a Delaware name. I've heard it too. I can't think of it. I don't know, I can't think um, of it at all. My dad's name, I know that, he ain't supposed to name him. But you know, his name was uh, to be Doxy. I hear him way down there, I hear him way over the hill or whatever. Oh. We called him, to make Papa mad, I'd call him long distance. Get <laughs> 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 <Give> me mad. <laughs> I don't remember a lot of them old fellas similar names yet. They call them when they go to church. I forgot that. Mm -hmm. During the, oh, about 10 or 11 o'clock, after they've been going about two or three hours, they call some men in there by name, and he uh, gives them one pound or beads, that is like money, to them workers. Like he called them, maybe he'd be out of the tent, sleep. Didn't come in, call his name. If you have that, one of them fellas goes out, one of them workers goes out and calls out real loud, calls like they'd call me, Sasaki Paki Kamenetta Yuta. He said, are you around here, Sasaki Paki Kamenetta? Maybe way over in the thing. Yeah, here I am. <laughs> yeah, one, that's it. Well, you come down, come in and uh, give you them beads, I want you to fix them beads up with that pole, big pole stick up. Fish Four of them, you're supposed to put that, uh, it was eight of them. You had to put that yard bead like that, in the division, like that on the ground, and cut them so it all supposed to equal number, but they didn't get After you get it cut, you stand back and say, all right, uh, Ushkazak, the heifers, come and get the pick berries. They'd come and pick berries. Women on this side, men on that side, come up. Hmm, just picking up fast as they could, like it was picking up berries. And it was good to eat. Hmm, get them in their mouth. That, it's more of a snatch grab. <laughs> <laughs> right there. I don't know, that was part of the ceremony. You never know what it meant, but I went into the favor. You were honored to come, and I did that once. Mm -hmm. I didn't ever think I'd ever be that, so that was yet a a young, real young yeah. fella, mm -hmm. and they called me. Papa woke me and said, I would be done, but then went to bed about 11 o'clock. They calling you, son. Boy, I don't know what to fix on what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> I was thought, oh, yeah, cut them beads. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uncle John Anderson, my uncle, he told me what to do, put them beads right there. And I told him, come and pick berries. Boy, they went to pick berries. Tom Apple. Andrew's mother and some more, mm -hmm. and they pulled it that way, was in there too. Mm -hmm. They picked them, uh, then they keep them. Mm -hmm. You know, they trade them or whatever they want to do, keep them. Funny, we ain't got them beads anymore. I think they sold all of them. What did get a hold of them? Mm -hmm. When I was a boy, there was a whole lot of them up there. My gosh, a lot of people stole them. I had about half a yard when I went drafted, went into the army, come home. I don't know where they went. I had them in the trunk, too. Mm -hmm. Nobody got them or somebody. I don't know where they went. Mm -hmm. I just don't know what to come up with. Um, 
Yeah. We wouldn't hear about marriage ceremony? Yeah. I, now, I never witnessed one. I'm going to tell you what my dad told me. I went there, I said, Papa, how did they do when, they, when the pe people wanted to get married? He says, well, he said they generally had a, fr a friends from both sides come to somebody's house. And the main man would get up and was going to marry him, one of the older men, or could be chief. And he'd say, I'm here to unite and marriage, if I'd say that. These two peoples, two Delaware people, so they'll carry on to be maybe some more increase in the Delaware tribe. And we'd make a speech all both sides of the house, how good people, this fellow's good people, he knowed them a long time. When the upshot of it will be at the end, he'd pull out a nice blanket like a, no way, tell them, knee on the floor. They did, the man and the woman, and the man, man on the right side, and woman on the left side. Kneel, that's not what it told me, I never seen it. They'd kneel, and then he'd pray. I hope they have a good life, fruitful life. And they'd take this nice blanket, put it over them, and they'd say, now, in the name of the Creator, I'm going to unite you two as a one person. We want you to carry on as one person, man and wife. That's it. Oh, well, yeah. All I heard about it. Papa told me that. Yeah. That's where I heard that old saying, you know, when, <laughs> when they got, when the divorce or quit, they split that blanket in the middle. <laughs> You've heard that saying. They split the blanket. Split blanket. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. Um. What else? Well, it sounds like you got quite an interview there. As far you as think of anything else you could tell him, Mary? No, he he worked me over the other he worked me over the other day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he was here the other day. Oh, well, that's to me. good. That's good. Yeah. How often do you have your classes? Oh. Sometimes once a month, but we don't really know when we're going to have them. No, it is I'll leave that up to Whenever join. we can get together, <laughs> that calls. I'll that leave that up to Joanne Markley. Yeah. And she has them, and some, and some of the boys, now like Sanford, mm -hmm. he works, and it has to be on some night he ain't working or something, you know, or they ain't yeah. sick, and then we'll go. Mm -hmm. Then maybe they'll call us, like, like today, they'd call us day before. Can you go down there and we can go? Uh, yeah. Well, well, let's see. You got married? Can you could call him? Could you? You live, yeah. you live around here? Yeah. Yeah, we, just down the road. See, down the road. Okay. I'll tell you what we'll do. You got Mary's number, ain't you, darling? Yeah, I got it. If they call me and tell me to be, they're going to get me tomorrow night. Yeah. Well, I could call Mary. Well, Couldn't that's I all do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Really about seven or seven thirty. We don't go till about ten or ten thirty. Then we have a dinner first. Everybody yeah, eat dinner. Mm -hmm. Usually a cafeteria style. You walk along, get what you want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we have a blessing for that we eat. Yeah. Okay. Well, I appreciate this. Pardon? Thank you. I appreciate this. Oh, sir, glad to. Glad to. Yes, sir. Glad to. Thank you. Now, what's your name? I forgot it. Joe Todd. Todd. T O D D. T O D D. God know it, huh? Yes, sir. Oh, what did you do at the cement plant? Oh, I worked in that coal mill. You know where they ground that coal up? They ground coal up real, that's what they fired with. Okay. And them kills, you know, you have to take out lime when they crush them rocks. Mm -hmm. Dust, that's lime, just plain lime dust. Well, they got to put that lime through some kills, cookers to about 1,700 degrees Fahrenheit. And then they run into little balls there, kind of like little coals, ashes-like things, like balls. They call them uh, clinkers. They have to be cooked. And after they cut them clinkers, then they grind them up real fine, and that's cement. Sometimes they mix it with rosin. That's the kind they use for ma mason-like plastic. Mm -hmm. And the common sidewalk cement, they don't mix it nothing with mud or clay or something. And uh, it's cement. They had to cook it. If you don't, you just got lime. Mm -hmm. 
And then I'm killed. There's about five killed, wasn't it? Then they found seven. Seven, finally. And got a big that one. Yeah, they got that big one. Now ground that coal. You take that coal, yeah, run it through a big dryer, there's a big cylinder, and that's fire all around it, to get that coal real dry. It was a name. It's just yeah. pump dry, and then I pump. And I ground it up. I got the mills in there. Where it's a wheel-like thing that crushes. It's a grinder. Mm -hmm. Grinds it up real fine. And I blow it over there to them fellers. And they use it to fire with. Blow it in there. Yeah. Have you ever heard of the Sequoia Convention? Well, what? The Sequoia Convention. Sequoia Convention. No. It was in Muskogee in 1906. No. That's when they tried to make Indian Territory the state of Sequoia. I never heard of that yeah. one. They might have done that, I guess. Okay. Must have been Cherokees, huh? Well, it was uh, all the tribes all in Indian tribe, Territory, huh? yeah. That there, I'd, be, I'd been two years old, but I yeah. never heard them talk about it, though. They didn't pass, though. Uh, didn't, oh, they put it up to election. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's why we're Oklahoma now. Yeah, I put it in Oklahoma then. And uh, did you file? Did you <laughs> folks file for land? <laughs> you can hear that. <laughs> I got land down by Uligo, down on Collinsville, on the river. Oh, uh -huh. Wife, I got 50 acres down there, did. Wife, a mosquito let down her head, get stuck in the mud. <laughs> That's the kind of land I got. That's right. Old white gumbo, too. <laughs> yeah, I bet every time I get to I wanted to keep that land. Well, it finally brought me in some little good fortune. Well, good. When I was about eight years old, I drew some. Boy, good wells on there. Well, and when my got married, I thought, I oh, didn't get married till I was about 30, 35. I didn't be an old man. Mm -hmm. I had that one girl. I had to send her to school. And I couldn't get a job. I was running everywhere to get a job. I'd get a few days. Couldn't get no study job. I had to send her to school. I sold that land. And I sold a crop. I got the rights yet. Oh, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's good. I had to sell it. I wanted to keep it. Sure. Of course, I got a little lot there at Glen Oak. Now, yeah. that's what yeah. fell there. That was Mama's lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you were wise in keeping the mineral rights there. Right there. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, and I got it. I can do anything I want to. And I got a mm -hmm. half a house out there. <laughs> that's <laughs> funny. When they divide that <laughs> land, nobody got them. Always said, I don't get nothing. You got everything. There was a. Uh, you got 30 acres. When you're 60 acres there, 50 some acres. 30 acres there. <coughs> I told them just let her have that. She's always hollering, don't get done. Well, she got 30 acres and I got 15 acres. And Jim Buffalo's boy got, that, he got 15 acres. That's all I got out there. Now, and I got that old house there. It's all pretty good old house yet. Now, surveyed it just like this the house. Survey line went right through that. One side that house belongs to me, one side belongs to another. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we can't get in there going to Alabama. <laughs> yes. uh, and that part that my um, nephew got, he sold that to old mayor. You know, I thought I worked in the hardware store up to do it. Oh. He sold it to him. He's got it now out there. He's all right. We tried to plant some stuff out there. I did here a while back. Can't plant nothing out there. He's like it used to be. A deer would eat up. A roast deer. Mm -hmm. Rabbits. Mostly That's deer and raccoon. Mm -hmm. Rabbits, of course, will eat. Well, they look out. Raccoons is awful. Can't plant nothing. Oh, they're, they're bad. Joe and I never could plant corn here. Raccoons have come and eat it up. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what they do now. Raccoons, deer. A lot more deer out there than rabbits right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. Lots of deer. Because yeah. we're right next to the lunges. Had to take it. Oh, we can see. One time out. All right. Had the crown one and this and that and put in another one right there. No crown. <laughs> going ahead. Go, going to all that expense. I told her now. What up in and all this money about to fall over dead? You spent money for nothing. No, I don't do that. You've got two or three million dollars. Now, I said, look at, the, uh, look at the pair of jeans I could have bought for fixing my teeth. I could chew after I got my mouth kind of got just sore, that's all. Yeah. 
<laughs> you still you still have all your own teeth, don't yes, you? Yes, he does. No, but this one no, or two pulled off. Yeah. Uh-huh. He's got two <laughs> Feller told me one day, I asked him, he asked me how old I was up to Denver. I said, oh, I was about 60, 65 then. Mm-hmm. False teeth, ain't you? Mm-hmm. No, I said, well, God, God give me them teeth. He's the one made them false teeth for you. <laughs> he didn't believe me. <laughs> I said, them is mine. Well, you know, Joe had all of his own teeth. Yeah. Yeah, he sure did. Yeah. And like old Aunt Lizzie, you know that old, old grandma curly head? Yes. Mama would have to take her to the doctor and interpret. She couldn't talk English, she could understand. I don't know what doctor it was down here at town. Might have been old Woodring. Then they think it was. Says grandma, they call her grandma, you already have them old teeth pulled out. That's what's making you sick. They're not healthy. They're not going to pull them out. Have them pulled out. While he was talking, she was talking. Here they are. <laughs> I said, that's what Mama told me. I said, what did the doctor do? He said he's paid to turn red. <laughs> <laughs> that's the first second they'll say, though. Yeah, 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 that's the first, first try. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, if he had two teeth, I'd try to save him. And he said, well, that's better than these here China things. Chewing. I forget one book. It says, Suffer not a witch to live. I said, you believe? Where's the house? I have a word of Yeah. I had to preach it out, I had to shut up. Because <laughs> the old Jews absolutely said they was witches. <laughs> if you believe the Bible, that's so. And I've seen them. Mm-hmm. But what makes it hard, look, if he'd say, can you show me a witch? No, I can't produce one. Mm-hmm. But I have seen them. Mm-hmm. And I know that they kill people, them mm-hmm. days. Yeah. They, I don't know of any Delaware ones now. They're all gone, passed away. Because they were. The Mexicans has that too. So I talked to old Mexicans. Mm-hmm. They called it black magic. Mm-hmm. My uh, mother used to tell about uh, some young boys. You know, they went they went hunting, and the dogs jumped up a bear. You know, and they chased that bear. You know. And, they was trying to keep up with them dogs, and they finally caught up them dogs. Uh, finally, they just could kind of bark and kind of run off back, and they went up there to that tree where those dogs, where they said there was kind of old ladies sitting by that tree, and told them boys in Delaware to make their dogs behave. And boy, they saw that woman, and they just really took off. It's an so old lady, wasn't it? Yeah, wasn't they, Bear? They were the most turned back, turned back into a woman. Navajos, you know, is just, I work with Navajos up there, Utes, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they know too. Mm-hmm. Well, more, it's more prevalent with them now because uh, I guess we're getting more civilized down here. <laughs> what about, um, how come the Delawares have witches? <laughs> I can't. I've heard it too. How they come to start? So the course is that the devil, the one gave us stardom. But I can't think of that. I've heard Papa tell about it too. Did you used to I hear? Did you used to hear about it like a long time ago when, before they'd go out or outside, in the night time they'd go by the stove and put some coal black on their face yeah. and then they'd keep the witches away. Shoes too the ashes. <laughs> that would keep you from running into evil spirits. Oh, uh-huh. They claim sometimes the fella has uh, paralyzed. He gets too close to, that's not witches. That's just like the Bible says there's demons. Uh-huh. Well, the Bible says there's demons. Uh-huh. Yeah. And there is demons, Guess good spirits and bad crazy. spirits. Mm-hmm. So and that, see that ashes on your shoe, it's just like fire going and it gets away. You know? mm-hmm. And lots, I've seen fellas about that to have his face kind of like that. Mm-hmm. That's got too close to the evil spirit. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm.